Many years ago, when the planet Krypton, home of a race of supermen, exploded in space, the sole survivor was an infant boy who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Today, that boy, grown to manhood, is known as Superman. How does it look? Just like any other oil well. Above ground, sure, but take my word for it, it's the deepest ever drill. Well, that's more than six miles down. Good heavens, practically to the center of the Earth. Just what was in that report? I mean the one that you sent to the home office. Uh, you're the newspaper man. That's right, I'm Clark Kent from the Tropolis Daily Planet. No, they had the bodies of, of, of moles and great big human heads. They were just horrible. Those creatures killed that poor old man and they wanted to kill me. like you that make it difficult for people to understand one another. You're not going to shoot those little creatures. Save your time and ammunition, Benson. Here, we aim to get it and string it up. Who's going to stop me? Well, you got Superman. If he can't stop them, nobody can. Now I'm going to give you one last chance to stop acting like Nazi stormtroopers. You're leading a, a, a double life. Really? Welcome to Movie Umbers. I'm Bob Sham. I'm Angela. Uh, the sounds you hear are dogs or us talking about movies. Mm-hmm. And this month's theme, adolescent power fantasy. That sounds very dismissive. Yeah. And, uh, okay, maybe it is a little. But we're not, we're not, we're talking about superhero movies and we're getting back into our classic vintage movies. And in, the, and in those cases, we do have one superhero movie, the one we're talking about today, which mm-hmm. is vintage. Mm-hmm. But uh, for other ones, we're talking about the classic adolescent power fantasies like being a pirate or Zorro or Robin Hood or yeah. shit where um, that actually has a lot of influence to a lot of the superhero stuff we're talking about this month. But we're not here to gripe. It's not a gripe month. No, 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 no. We have little gripes. Sure. But it's not a gripe month, all right? Despite the passive-aggressive theme title of Adolescent Power Fantasy. but I mean, it's just speaking to the fact that these are are stories for children or young people. It's Adolescent Power Fantasy. And we're talking about uh, our first week here. We're talking about a classic character. A character that I've always been a bit of an apologist for, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I love comic book history, comic strips, stuff like that. And so, but my connection to these characters is often through uh, the appreciation of the historical context of where they came from, the people who created them, Mm. the writers and the artists and what they were like when they were making these characters Mm -hmm. and what they were going through or the period in American history in which all of these crazy colorful ideas come from. Yeah. That means a lot to me. And a lot of that, as you know, we are really just full in the dregs. I think we've now went over the peak with the superhero movie. And now it's, I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, you spend a quarter of a billion dollars making a superhero movie. It makes a hundred million dollars now opening weekend. Mm -hmm. And despite that making more than all the other movies, that's seen as a failure. What do you think was the pinnacle, if you had to call it? Where people are like, okay, I'm good. Um, probably that... The last Spider-Man? With the three Spider-Men? Oh, you know, the, I think that was one that a lot of people went to that go see. That was the see. last one I enjoyed. But I think the real pinnacle was, like, the Avengers Endgame Infinity War stuff. Well, that's true, because after that, like, the reason we didn't see the third Spider-Man in the theater was because after that, I was like, I cannot... Yeah, anymore. it's just too much. Yeah, it was too much. They finally brought like an end to a chapter and it just needed, we needed a break. And there's not to say there's not going to be any hits from then on. It's just maybe going to have to like be something. The studios have beaten it into the ground. Of course, we got. They've a, oversaturated themselves. We got uh, SAG is striking now alongside the Writers Guild. The Directors yep. Guild is not striking as of this recording. Maybe they will. They We're, should. Uh, they should they should stand in solidarity, solidarity with their writers and artists against the studios. But it looks like that battle might be pretty contentious. So it could go on for a while. It could. Um, and yeah, we'll see. Maybe the studios will uh, hold off on spreading out their 
content that's in post production right now and seeing mm-hmm. where that goes. But yeah, it's Superman. We're talking about Superman. Yes. This week. And Superman is one that I've always defended. I think people look at him very superficially. They either like, oh, I don't like him. He's like a Boy Scout and he's like, uh, he's really strong. Nothing can hurt him, even though he is vulnerable to things. Mm-hmm. But the fact that he gives a shit about things is, I think, what's great about him. His compassion is his downfall, or can be. Everyone wants brooding, brooding shit now. Everyone wants to figure out, this is why this Snyder shit didn't work. Everything was just like, everyone wants to tell the story of Superman going crazy. Everyone wants to look at him with that expectation. Meanwhile, Batman's over here with all the money and all the toys, and no one's like, Christopher Nolan did kind of touch base on what his ability to access his surveillance state, which is kind of interesting, but that also kind of, was touched on just very surfacely as well. Well, it's that whole like bad boy versus good guy yeah. thing. And Batman's the bad boy who needs fixing, who's very broken. Superman is the good guy who's going to like lay his coat down for you to walk over a puddle. You he, know, he's yeah. going to rescue the kitten. He's going to rescue he's the gonna kitten. He's going to stop and talk to the kid. Yeah. He cares about people. I think the thing about Superman. That I always explain to people what's interesting about him is that this is this man is a god. Yeah. He could break the planet in half, but he chooses not to. Yeah. He sees something in humanity that maybe isn't even entirely accurate. <laughs> he he pulls hope from Not them. on a whole. He pulls hope from humanity. Yeah. But in reality, he's better than any human would be if they were embodied by his powers. And it was because he was raised, he's just some Midwestern boy raised by good, full hearted, open minded parents. Well, I mean, this isn't in the movie we're talking about today, but there is a point in a Superman movie where his Jarrell, his father, actually says to him, the reason he chose Earth is because of their capacity for good. Yeah. The capacity for good. How evil is every other alien race? How evil is every other race? Well, we also look like them. That was the biggest thing: is that you can look (laughs) like a human. I like the idea of like Krypton being like such a kind of a cold kind of looking, like in both attitude and visual. Yeah. But we'll get into the Donner movies later this week. Thousands of years ahead of us. But we're talking today about the first ever full length feature Superman movie, and it was like kind of a a test for. A hit show that would come starring George Reeves. It was really cool. I never saw that show, and I had never seen this movie, but it did feel like a very long episode of a television show. It felt already very established. They just kind of walked in like, Lois Lane, Clark Kent, we know who these people are. And obviously from comic books and stuff, you do. Like, your audience maybe should know who they are? Yeah. I think think most people do know who... Yeah. Yeah. I think even today, most people like well, yeah, could be like, today. yes, Superman and Lois Lane. But I meant like, you know, back in that landscape when you don't have as much media, you know. I mean, and you were mostly getting it from comic books, right? Like, I mean, Superman had been around for like 40 years at that point. Okay. So cool. he'd been around like a minute. No, yeah. 28, 38, 48, 50. Yeah, 40 years. Amazing. Yeah. So he he was already a phenomenon well into, mm-hmm. hence why they got a, were wanting to do a TV show on him. They wore some big pants in this movie, just to throw that out there, just to say it. They big that, old pants. That's just how they did it back then. Big pants up up by your tits. <laughs> now all women dress like this. With big pants. <laughs> all women dress like Annie Hall or something. No, not really. <laughs> not really. But everyone is wearing their pants high. Yeah. Yeah. It's more flattering. To the ass. Uh, yeah. It makes the asses look good. <laughs> So, yes, it starts George Reeves, Phyllis Coates, uh, Superman, and or Clark Kent and Lois Lane. They go to a small town. They're running a story on the world's deepest oil well. Yeah, they make a big deal mentioning multiple times that they have flown in for this. Because mm. the guy who arranged it all, the PR guy for the world's deepest well, is very embarrassed because he's brought them there to do this story. And immediately they're told by the foreman or whoever the guy is it's that we're not doing down. it. We shut it down. They're yeah. burying tools. Yeah. He's being very secretive. Apparently there was a report that he gave to the home office and they were like immediately shut down. So this article is going to be one of those fluff pieces that is like that essentially World's largest drill. some oil yeah. companies paid for, you know, I wouldn't call it real reporting, truly. But, well, not at first. But then it becomes a story. 
because uh, at one point when no one's looking, a latch opens up and these little dudes, former members of the Lollipop Guild, come out and they're dressed in like shag carpet suits. With zippers up their backs. With zippers up their backs. They also had a very interesting hair pattern. I was so intrigued by this. So they were they had big, head, like extra large heads. You know, if my head was taller, I could be like a mole man. They also had though like... These weird little patches of hair here. They were very interesting looking and they had little hairy hands. Yeah. And here's the thing. And huge dicks. If you've ever seen a picture of a mole, these do not look like moles. And yet, the first thing that Lois Lane said, because she saw them mm-hmm. through a window, was that they looked like little moles. With human heads. With very large human heads. You know what they looked like? Little old men. In baggy shag carpets. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, listen, we're establishing. Again, did we say the title is Superman and the Mole Superman and the Mole Men. Mole Men, not Mail Men. <laughs> That's Superman That's and the Mole Men. Uh, directed by Lee Sholem. Uh, yes, and written by Richard Felding. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so they would go on to make the Superman show. Yes. It was like a Nick at Night staple when I was in the 90s. It was on Nick at Night. I remember it being around, but that was a time when I did not watch a lot of television. And my Nick at Night was like the monkeys. When we got older, Nick at Night was like all the 70s shit we watched Mm -hmm. in the 80s. Yeah. Do they even have Nick at Night anymore? Is that even around? At some point, they 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 split it into like a different television station on cable, but yeah, I don't think yeah. that's around anymore. Where they put all the old timey stuff, so it was all Brady Bunch, Monkeys, well, Lucy. Cable has gone down quite a bit. Yeah, so, so I don't even know if that's a I mean, thing. Um, TV and movies are. It's interesting that we started this podcast YouTube show because honestly, the way people are taking in entertainment and the way people see it, and I think the pandemic had a lot to do with it, especially about with the theaters, the movie theaters is like. It seems like it's we're in strange times with oh, it right yeah. now. With everything. So. We're not out of the strange times for a while, I think, either. Maybe d- down the road, this this whole, our whole show will just feel more like a throwback to times when people gave a fuck about movies. Like, are movies kind of flopping? Are they fading out? That's kind of sad to think in a way. I think it would take a long time before they completely go away, but it doesn't seem like they're in their tip-top shape. We cannot say that because we just last month did a catch-up month of 2022 films and they blew us away. There, it wasn't every movie, but I'm just saying they're still being made. Now we have to see what happens after the strike, but I'm just saying look, I think criti- good stuff. Critically fantastic movies are going to always pop up you just mean in general it's about the box office and it shouldn't matter to us or the listener Mm -hmm. what a movie makes like at my core it doesn't but sometimes you do just want to take a look at that to see the patterns and what people are absorbing and where people are at and then you got other things like the con the, the idea of ai and shit like that which People are really worried about losing their jobs, and a big part of the strike shit that's happening is due to the studios wanting to do AI. Marvel on the Disney Plus, they have the Secret Invasion show Mm -hmm. with Nick Fury in it. The intro is AI. Oh, really? Like, it's visual AI, and it looks like that fucking cold lifeless I hate that, that uncanny valley. That, yeah, that looks. You know, it's not real. That looks like, um, like, like it's like the covers of the Dune books, but even with less charm than a Dune cover. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> hey, so, but I will never watch that fucking show for that reason alone. Like, I'm already... It seemed interesting at first, but I'm already fucking done with this. No, I don't I don't think I'm down for most... No one wants to watch that fucking show. MCU television shows, anyway. <laughs> uh, so... The one of the things that's most interesting to me about this movie is, first of all, we're not in Metropolis. Um, they're not they're not building that set until we know we get the green light for the show. Brilliant, which feels very much like first episode of Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. Because first episode of Star Trek, they're mostly on an island that's a desert. It's easy, and with people with big heads. Yeah, it's a formula that works. It does. This, um. <laughs> this set did have the Star Trek feeling of like, yeah. okay, these are our weird aliens or yeah. something, right? Well, and, and so, like, establishing, but what's interesting the most to me, besides the fact that we're not in Metropolis, is that these mole men are not villains. No. There is not a big bad in this. The bad people in this movie are the localized, it's bigotry. Like, it is. It's bigotry. It's, it's this local, town. like, 
self-proclaimed like they're almost like a little they're a lynch mob basically they want to like catch these dudes and kill them and it's interesting because they get scared because people are scared of these mole men but these mole men are just curious like listen we knocked on their door Mm -hmm. so they came out so they have the right to look through our windows they can look through our windows now the reason that superman is worried and rightfully so, is that when they touch things, the things start glowing. And so he's like, oh, I'm scared this could be radiation, right? Because yeah. one of the guys also shows him some samples, right? And they think, oh, this could be dangerous. And so the bigger concern is anything these guys touch could be dangerous for people to also touch. But besides that, they're not bad. No, no. They're just scaring people because they look weird. And one man has a heart attack when he sees them. So he that does. that's kind of what gets people riled up. They think that there's they're murdering. Someone else sees them and like falls down and breaks his arm. Some woman who's doing her curlers who could never get her story out just got scared. Clark Kent is immediately like, let's not judge yeah. what's going on here. We don't have enough information. And this is like the classic, you know, at a point, like all the heroes were pretty much all shucks do gooders. Yeah. And, yeah, maybe it was tired at the time, but we've been in, like, oh, let's make them brooding and dark for over 40 years now. So it actually is refreshing is. when you see it will be embodied more in a way we like in the Richard Donner movies. Those are my favorite. But, but yeah, it I you do, it, it does genuinely feel like how I feel like Superman would be, where he's like, no, the, uh, th- these things, they're, they're harmless. Let's not judge them. Superman's representing a more unified stance as opposed Mm -hmm. to a fearful and reactive one. He also knows what it's like to be different Mm. and viewed as other without being given a chance, Yeah, you know? And so he finds himself trying to save these little mole men who are running around the town from this, like, mob of people who are trying to kill them. And at one point, they shoot one of them. Yeah. He grabs the one that got shot. He's falling into the water and he swoops him up so he doesn't go into the water because, hi, if he was full of radiation, the whole town would be dead. And it's 1958 effects, Gloria. Yes. It's great. It's great for what it was. So the other one runs away and Superman takes the the one that got shot to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And Lois is, I mean, there's always that thing like, how can you not know that Superman? And Lois is like... I mean, Superman can be anywhere very quickly, but yeah. but Lois is like you're he- you're here and doesn't question it, you know. Yeah. And this Lois is kind of kind of dumb until the point where she's punching, fighting back against yes. the town people. And that's, that was cool. That's when she's kind of cool, but she is like kind of like whiny and dumb in this movie. Yeah, but ends up that Superman convinces this one doctor to do surgery on this little mole man even though his boss is like i'll fire you if you don't leave yeah yeah because they put like a they put like the lead thing that you get an x-ray with over him i guess to not expose and obviously superman's like immune so he can be in there so he is clark kent assists the doctor yeah which is super weird (laughs) he's just like i'll assist you okay rando (laughs) newspaper man but he does and so in the meantime the the villager people, now I'm speaking about them like they're in fucking Frankenstein or something. They might as well be. I mean, that's how it feels. They chase the little one, I'll say, who didn't get shot, into this, like, old barn thing. And they, and they, and they set it on fire. But he figures out how to dig his way out. But this is, this is a, my, one of my big criticisms here is we got another scene where they know the things at the hospital and Superman is there. And there's an armed mob. They, like, shoot him, and he's like, ha, ha, ha. Mm-hmm. And then he takes their guns and bends them. The classic mm-hmm. Superman shit. And then, like, they're swinging on Superman. And as Superman, like, shoves him, and he's, like, going into the crowd to fight him, mm-hmm. it fades out right when the action yeah, is Yeah, they didn't give us an action scene. So when Superman... And I felt like, even watching this, that I, I could come up with a few techniques that could look a little better than the way they were showing it right there. So we they fade out to the the most action in this uh-huh. movie's going to have. But when we go to the little guy escaping, it's like it feels like 20 minutes of him just peeking out of the bushes. Yeah, it's weird. It's such a drag ass. It is. You know, um, you know, maybe honestly, Mr. Reeve 
Maybe couldn't move around that well because he, he was wearing a girdle. Yeah, yeah, you could tell. I did notice <laughs> you could totally see that he wasn't quite as cut as they wanted their Superman to be. Yeah. And so they very much like smoothed out his midsection with this like tight girdle that also then made his chest poof out a little bit. It was just very funny. But maybe they didn't. I don't know. I agree with you. That was kind of bullshit. Like he just put, shoved a few dudes and it was over. It's like, yeah, you. it's action at the end of the day. You also, gotta have action. Also, 20 minutes leading up to this little guy escaping from them. And then they just go, well, we caught it on fire. Let's go. He's dead. Yeah. That's <laughs> most, like, stupid. Also, there's a lot of, like, explaining what's happening out loud. Like, the one guy's like, get some dried brush. And I was like, ooh, they're going to burn him up. And then the guy's like, oh, I get it. This will catch on fire. And then he will be caught inside and die. Well, <laughs> well if that that's, I mean, over-exposition is definitely in line with classic comic books. But that's, I actually love that part. Sure. Because it, do, it is that. And that's actually sweet, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so he gets away, but he goes back down and he gets a couple buddies because they're like, we got to go get our friend. We don't know where he is, but we have to find him. They work their way. They bring a weapon. So it's like, now the little ones come back with two more mole men and they have like a laser gun. Yeah. And they make their way to the hospital. One thing that's annoying is that it implies that Superman broke all their weapons and fucked them up, but he didn't do anything with the mob. Like, he didn't, like... Oh, yeah. Put them, like, for your safety, I'm going to lock you put in this building. Put them all in building. jail. So when we see the the head, of the head of the angry mob, he just has a rifle, and it's like, didn't Superman just, like, go through y'all? Granted, it faded out of the scene. Well, and he had a pistol originally, and then he shows up with a rifle, and he's, I think, the only one with a gun, so I guess it was, like, the only other gun they could find that Superman didn't take. So so the moment want revenge, and they see Dude, and they start blasting well, they him blast with the Superman laser. they first. Well, oh, he gets in Superman front, Superman right? gets in front of the That's guy right. after they blast the dude. That's right. He and it's not hurting dude. Superman. And then the guy is then like, you saved my life. And the, didn't Superman be like, more than you deserved? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. And so Superman, you know, he ends up carrying the little mole people. He, he carries one in his arms. It's real cute. There's a picture of that there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he puts them back into the hole. And then he, then they destroy the whole oil rig. From under. Like they yeah. go down and blow it up probably with that with, same gun. With the thunder from down under, they destroyed <laughs> the oil rig. And then Superman's like, I made the world safe uh, for these mole men. Um, these mole men were only six miles below the surface. Yeah. I don't know how deep things have to be. I assume the center of the earth is more than six miles. Yeah. I don't I don't think you're even it's far six past six miles to the, my brother's house. The, the, <laughs> the, the crust or the mantle or something. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to remember my uh my sixth grade it's like a seven layer cake it doesn't geology. matter or it's seven layer dip yes gotta- exactly <laughs> they got through the beans or they got through the uh, the guacamole and they're like they're around the beans or yeah and that's where the mole people live the also the this uh, movie also clarifies that the center of the earth is hollow yes now we we hunt movies we hump them uh one through five yeah uh you give it one through five i'll give it one through five it had the charm of the way I like a Superman, mm-hmm. but maybe not much else beyond that. But um, what do you think about this movie? How many humps do you give it? I had fun watching this movie. It's only an hour, thank goodness. Yeah, it was only an hour. That's why it felt like a long episode of a television show. I felt like you could have cut it down to like 30 minutes. Though. It could have been. Yeah, it could have been a legit television show episode. You know what? I, I don't want to give it like a below average score. Because I do feel like it launched a whole thing, you know? Yeah, that but doesn't... It is like that... That alone doesn't make it good. Okay. Because there's been plenty... Superman's great. I mean, great. that's true. Superman's great, but there's been good stories, there's been bad stories. There always has been. I did like the Mole Men. I liked that the bad guy was a regular dude. Yeah. Like, a, I'm going to... You know what? I'm just going to give it a 2.25. I'm going to give it a 2. Okay. So that brings it to a 4.25. That's a C. We haven't hit the Cs in a minute. Where are we at? Would you would you say that uh, Superman and the Mole Men is better than Bit? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the characterizations are a lot more defined mm-hmm. and like they they seem to make sense. Even like the guy who was in charge of the drill site, 
he had like an arc where he was like yes. this m- mean dude, and then he eventually is like, okay, I'm gonna work with you, and then he's like helping Superman. There you go, Superman in the Moment, our eleventh best C tier movie, and <laughs> uh, we got a lot more Superman to go this week, and we will be getting to uh, our boy. Christopher Reeve. No relation to George Reeves. There's an S at the end of George Reeves. Gotcha. And there's no S at the end of Christopher Reeve. There you go. I've got Mole Man head. I've got no. I've got a Mole Man head. Your head's not that big. Yeah, it's, I, yeah. I could be. Maybe if I put on a shag carpet outfit or something. <laughs> anyway, uh, check the show notes for links and other places to find us. Have you seen this movie before? What do you think about it? What is your favorite Adolescent power fantasy. Yes. Or something. Right? Whatever. What the fuck ever. Death to all traitors. (laughs) 